as uh, as been announced we'll be talking about the david david uh, king david david the son of jesse and um, a lot of things to learn we may not be able to cover the whole thing even today i'll be just uh, highlighting some of the important things about this man david but we'll read uh, from uh, <coughs> uh <coughs> <clears throat> the section that I'm taking is from uh, Samuel chapter 16. So it will be good for you to, when you go home, read 15, 16, 17 and uh, Psalm 1. Uh, but I will read a few verses from Samuel chapter 16. Just to get the background. Samuel chapter 16 uh, and I'm reading from verse 5. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to his, to his sacrifice. And in verse 6, And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh the heart. Verse 11, <clears throat> And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there all my, thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down until he come hither. Verse 12. And he went sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal uh, of a beautiful countenance and godly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. <clears throat> and verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came from upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now, this David's story is a very uh, interesting and powerful one. We have um, read this and also uh, Psalm 1. Keep that in mind. We uh, take note of Psalm 1. Um, and I'll just, I think I'll read verse 1 to 3, Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. This is what it says here. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth fruit, uh, in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's the blessed man. Uh, and remember that one thing that David wrote the Psalms. That's his own personal experience. And that's how we learn to know and understand about David quite a lot more. Now, the important thing to remember, if you look at the history of uh, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, they came out under the leadership of God. God guided them, directed them, showed them what to do, what not to do. From the heathen uh, 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 idol worshipping people, he brought them out and um, uh, to, to one true God. They began to worship the one true God. And um, they went through that way, God guided them, led them, directed their paths all the time. But the time came when the children of Israel began to look at the, uh, at the other nations round about. There were so many different other nations there and they had kings and they had someone who was leading them, directing them and uh, the children of Israel said, we want a king too. We want a king just like this um, uh, other nations that were there. And um, so uh, God allowed that to happen. But um, the thing we must understand is that God selects people not on the basis uh, of their outer 
appearance, as we read here, when um, uh, Jesse brought out his sons, Eliab was the oldest one, and uh, Samuel thought, well, that's the one. And, um, but then what happened, he said, no, that's not the one. That's not the selected one. So what the thought here is this, that the man selects according to what they think is right. Now, when, when the children of Israel said, we want a king, then uh, God allowed them, a different process, allowed them to have a king, and that was Saul. Saul was selected, and Saul was selected by man's heart, chosen according to man's heart. What man thought is the right person. They looked at him, they were, he was strong, man of war, um, his height was good, and everything they thought, so they said, we'll choose him. But, as I said, we must remember that God does not uh, select men on the basis of their qualities, but rather, he does not select them in their outward appearance, in the qualities, what kind of person that he is. Uh, and God wants every one of his children to become a person after his own heart. In other words, he wants people, all of us, to be very close to God so that God can look at us and say, well, that person is close to my heart and um, um, use him in that way. But that happen, does not happen just overnight. It is something that you and I will have to work at it as you will see Saul was chosen by men. They selected him. They decided that Saul will be the king. So they selected him. And uh, <clears throat> everything that they decided, everything the children of Israel decided was in Saul. They saw that in Saul. He was handsome and uh, he was uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. Looked good and powerful. So said, that's the man. You see, children of Israel looked at his outward appearance and they said, okay. Now, so many times we uh, run into that kind of uh, difficulties. We decide to have something and we use our head and we say, well, no, no, that's the one. That's the way I want to go. That's where I want to go. But we put God aside. We don't come to him and seek him and his guidance. It's very important for us as Christians that uh, we put God first. <coughs> and we read that in the scripture, it simply very clearly says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other thing will be added unto you. So putting God first is so very important. Doesn't matter what you do. Getting his desire, his, um, uh, his mind in whatever you are doing. So many people get into difficulties because they, they think they can do it themselves. That's what happened to children of Israel. They thought that Saul would be the right person because he looked good, everything was fine, and you know what happened. Saul made a mess of it, and children of Israel went through a lot of difficulties. This is what happens to many people today, many young people today, many older people today. They make decisions on what they think is right. They think, well, this is it, and they make their choices and then end up into difficulties. It's like I said this morning, they, they make the kitchen, you know, and then they come to the pastor, please separate the dal and the rice. All the problem over there, then they come. And that's what happened to many people because they don't put God first. Always put God first, doesn't matter what happened. Children of Israel and life of David is a good example of what uh, came up, uh, we see here for our personal life. Put God first. Doesn't matter what it costs. It might not look good. It might be uh, hurtful. May, others may laugh, laugh at it. But if the Lord puts it, put God first, you'll find that things will go. All right. So what we see, <clears throat> uh, Saul was chosen after man's heart. Everything that the people desired was seen in Saul. The people desired, remember that. The people desired was seen in Saul. He was handsome. He was uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. And they said, that's the right person. And because they chose this, he became a disaster. Uh, and he failed to establish the kingdom, the children of Israel. 
they, they failed. I mean, he failed to establish the kingdom because he became a very self-willed person. He wanted to do things on his own, his own way, and it ended in despair, defeat, and shame because he thought he can do it on his own because he thought that, you know, God can be aside. I will do it myself. And you know his story. If you read it, you'll find that, that he said, I want to do it my way. And it ended up into trouble. Now, when this happened, then David, uh, Saul was rejected. Saul, the Samuel was the prophet, and God told Samuel, you select another one because I have rejected Saul. He is no more he worthy of a king. And so the new king will be selected after God's heart. And uh, this would be God's direction and in the way God wanted. Samuel at this time realized that, uh, uh, that moral and spiritual worth cannot be, cannot by natural eye or natural mind. In other words, what he was doing was this. He called the people. He went, Samuel went to uh, the house of Jesse, and Jesse was called out for, to make a sacrifice, and Saul, Samuel, God told Samuel what to do. He went to select, and uh, he called all the children over so that uh, he could look at them, all the sons, and then decide. Now, when the first son came, Eliab came, he was nice, strong, hefty-looking person, beautiful, and Samuel thought, well, that's the one. But God said, no. I have rejected him. Then Shama came, and the same thing happened. And God said, no, I have rejected him. And all the seven sons came. All of them were rejected. That is God's choice. God said, no, don't select any of them. And then we know the story that uh, Samuel said, is there any other one? He said, yes, there is one more. He's out in the field looking after sheep. And Samuel says, bring him in. Uh, so we find that out of all of this, sons of Jesse, the favor of God landed on a lad named David. That was his name, David. David was a shepherd boy and he was brought up. And <clears throat> David was the youngest son of a poor farmer from a very small village. He um, lived in this small village, poor farmer. Nothing that he had to show. He was, he was not strong and mighty man like uh, um, Saul or his other brothers. David was the youngest son of this poor farmer. And then also David uh, was a young man who was not even respected by his own family. If you read his story, you'll find that his brothers, they all sort of uh, made fun of him. Uh, they, they did not respect him. David was actually a nobody. He, the, the other sons were all right. They were doing something and they were mature. But David was young and they always tried to put him aside as a nobody. Yet we find that the grace of God, by grace of God, David was selected. And David became the greatest king of the children of Israel. Nation of Israel. The greatest king. How? Because God selected him. He also became the ancestor of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see that God's choice is something else. Um, you may not expect that way. They did not expect that uh, David could be chosen. But David was chosen because God saw his heart and brought him in. He, he became a man very close to God's heart. Only God can tell what's inside a person. I may not be able to tell, you cannot tell what the other person is doing, what is his uh, potential. But God knows if we allow him, if we allow him in our life, if we allow him to take control, if we allow him and pray and seek him first, you'll find that God will direct us to the right person. He knows who is the right person. He knows what the potentials you have. But he needs you to Surrender yourself to him. So we see that David becomes a mighty man, great king, well respected later in the years. But what was the secret? 
what was the secret of david what made him this great king and that is found in psalm 1 i think uh, this is a psalm that you all need to read memorize it put it into practice apply it to your personal life put uh, psalm 1 uh, over there on the screen i want to see that psalm 1 we see the picture of the kind of person david was and the kind of person god wants each one of us to be and um, right here it says the blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful now what we need to do is um, uh, just leave that to the first verse what we must understand here is this this is david writing it's his own personal experience that he's putting over there and he says blessed is the man and uh, then he goes on to say that he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly how often we make this big mistake of running to the ungodly people for advice and counsel psalmist david says we don't do that blessed man he doesn't run to the ungodly people for advice blessed man he doesn't stand in the path of sinners he doesn't have relationship and fellowship with sinners stays away from them and then he doesn't see to sit with the scornful those who make fun of god those who uh, laugh at uh, things of god you don't have relationship with them you don't sit with them and you will see that the uh, that that is what made david completely different from everybody else because he decided that he would not do that look at the next verse it says then his delight is in the law of the lord and in the law he meditates day and night the law of the lord is the bible all right the word of god that's what he's talking about so he says that his delight is in the law of the lord and he meditates upon it that is the secret of being successful david was successful because to him the law of the lord was very important the bible was important the bible maybe at that time it was not in this format but it was there the word was there and uh, he read it he meditated upon it and to him that was the thing and that's what made him so great uh, and this is what god wants us to be a person of that nature a person who meditates upon the word of god a person who reads the word of god a person who understands the word of god a person who applies the word of god in their personal life this is so important for us and let me tell you for all of us young people older people so important to put god first in your life apply it to your personal life and you will find that god will do great and mighty thing you might think about that well why do we want to go back uh you know 3000 years uh away and start talking about a man who was who lived 3000 years ago well the answer for that is very simple we see that david achieved in life something that god wants each of his children to achieve study the life of david as you will be listening to his life in the next few weeks more and more but if you see his life you see that something that god wants from his life for all the children to achieve successful person obedient person a person who loved the lord a person who honored god a person who who took main attention in the word of god that was what something that's what he achieved he achieved something that many of us fail to attain so many times we want to do something but we fail because we want to do it our own way david became a man after god's own heart and um, we'll see his if you study his life it'll teach us what to do in all those things so my um, thinking is that i i cannot go into all the detail of what david did it'll take a long time it's a lengthy study but the fact is this that you need to look at the life of david let it let him become a example see what he did and how he did it what kind of man he was now the other thing you must remember is that david was not a perfect man 
in fact he was far from being there perfect he failed he failed big he sinned but the thing about him was that he quickly repented of his sins and it's never repeated in his life again the sin that he committed he repented forsook it and never repeated in his life again that is why he became man very close to god's heart because of that because he was such a man and then also you can see that he was very obedient person in all his life you will see that he was obedient his faith and his worship you look at the psalms he's writing those psalms all of it is just worshiping god expressing his faith expressing his obedience to god he uh, looks together uh, you know when you look at david you can study his life and you can say well if if it was true with david if david can do it i can do it too because i'm a human being also and the same god that david served i am serving and he'll do it so very briefly and quickly here i'm saying is this that we learn from david life even though it was 3000 years away but we learn a lot from him and the only way you learn it when you turn to the scriptures and look at the life of david the way he lived the things that he did as i said he was not a perfect man he sinned he he went the wrong way but the thing that we learn from it is that he repented and he asked for forgiveness and that sin is not repeated in his life again repentance is so very important repentance simply means turning around completely that's what david did when he committed the sin and um, he 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 repented he turned around completely and you'll never hear that sort of sin in his life again but he became a man of men in uh, after god's own heart now what was it that made him successful this is why reading psalm 1 is very important so i'll just briefly touch on that not going to take too much time on that just briefly touch on that but i'll encourage you to read psalm 1 and you will see what made david to be that kind of man see psalm 1 is david's own experience he is writing this he went through all that he was successful because of what is written over there and it's good for us too in in the first uh, verse uh, put that up there he doesn't believe like the wicked we see that put that psalm uh, on It says there the blessed is the man who would not the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of scornful I've already mentioned that but the here the thing is he does not seek the counsel of the ungodly he doesn't behave go and behave or do things with the wicked like the wicked he doesn't listen to their counsel he he, he doesn't listen to the the evil things that they are talking about his hearing was tuned little higher not to the men not to all the people maybe wise people uh, educated people highly qualified people maybe he uh, could have gone to them for counsel he could have listened to them but no he didn't david's hearing is tuned little higher and that was to god he was waiting and watching to see what god was saying to him so you see he did not believe in the wicked that's why it says there he did not take counsel of the ungodly and then he doesn't believe like the wicked the same thing with the cc over there uh, next verse and his delight is in the law of the lord and law meditate day and night uh, the same verse talks about he behaved differently not like the wicked people now he realized that his faith in god had changed him completely and every believer sitting over here i want to remind you of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 which says that if any man be in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new so you see we as a christian our life is changed we don't go back to the wicked ways 
we don't listen to the wicked ways we don't behave like the wicked because our life is changed we are born again the old practice the old habits the old language the old desires and all of that is completely dead it's gone finished is buried and says that we have become new people our life is new and every christian need to exhibit that need to show that that i am a new person because the old person is dead and at the same time he indicates that he he doesn't like to stay with the wicked people or spend time with the wicked people in other words with the unbelievers you go down with the unbelievers what you hear you know most probably you will hear swear words and things that are not pleasant all people will be talking all kinds of garbage the language will not be good and you you cannot mingle with them when you go there listen to them you immediately feel out of place because that's not the way you live you are a changed way at one time maybe yes you were before you came to christ but when you came to christ things change things change you became a new person and uh, this is what we learn from that particular verse uh, the one before that it talks about um, the downward progress it says that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of scornful you see there's three steps over there first walking if you as a believer you accompany unbelievers you are walking with them you listening to what they you you are you are ob, sort of a, observing what they are doing slowly and then the next step is you stand and try to you know you you start doing the things that they are doing you enjoy start enjoying it that's walking and then standing with them and enjoying and then the last one they said he sits in other words you completely get sold out you sit with them you listen to them you do what they are doing and you backslide that's what happens so this is why he talks about that he will not have anything to do with the wicked we are born again we are changed we are new creation we don't live and do things like that we are not surrounded by the devil's crowd but we are surrounded by the presence of the lord so this downward progress is something that we have to avoid because it will eventually lead us to downfall as i said you will be backsliding and far away from god the successful believer realizes there is a big difference between your life as a christian and the unbeliever the non christians between you and himself there is a big difference we have been saved we have been drawn out from the world we have become completely new creation we are born again and we live according to what god wants us to do so this is something very briefly i'm i'm bringing to your attention from the example of children of israel who wanted to be like the people of the world we want a king just like they have it and god allowed it and it brought mess in the life of saul as well as in the life of children of israel the same thing happens to us if we don't careful if we are not careful if we begin to do things that are contrary to the teachings of the word of god and we want to put god aside and to have it our own way they wanted their own way the children of israel said we want a man we want Saul because he was look nice looking tall and 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 the result was their own way brought about disaster later on when god chose the right man according to god's heart that man became a mighty man because he put god first and let us learn from this beginning of this david's life so important for us to put god first you don't believe <coughs> like the wicked <coughs> you stay away from them you don't listen to the counsel and the invitation of the evil one your hearing should be tuned up to god the word of god listen to what he is saying and he is directing and then we find that we don't we are completely changed because our lifestyle has been changed 
we believed in jesus born again completely new and then paul puts it very clearly that you have become a new creation all things have passed away so let's pattern our life according to what god has placed it so that we can become someone who is very close to god's heart god is so good he loves us we don't want to uh, think that well well i can do it i can manage i can walk with the wicked no problem you know and then eventually you start standing with them and sitting with them and start doing the things that they are doing and sometimes we think well you know i'm strong enough i'll overcome i'll run away but in the end you find yourself in great difficulty so let's be successful believers that we know there is a big difference between my life and the worldly life big difference between the way god has called me and the way i live and the way the people of the world live so we have to make a difference we have to make a big difference uh, 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 draw a line and say okay right i belong to god and my lifestyle is different so today uh, i just want to introduce to you the life of david the man he was close to god's heart a man who was selected he did things wrong he sinned but he repented and came back to the lord never to hear about the same sin in his life again so this morning as we go to communion let's search our heart search it out am i a person who is close to god's heart am i a person who is um, ready to surrender my all am i a person who is ready to say god you are first i want to do things the way you want to uh, want it in my life and you will find that you will not fail you might do things that are wrong but you can always come back and god will bless you would you stand with me now please hallelujah thank you jesus <clears throat> praise the name of the lord we prepare ourselves to take communion and um it's a very important part thank you lord jesus and as we prepare ourselves allow the holy spirit to search your life allow the holy spirit to minister to you allow the holy spirit to show what kind of person you are are you close to god or are you far away from him are you walking with these ungodly people are you standing with them are you enjoying their lifestyle the children of israel wanted the lifestyle of the heathens and they ended up in disaster help us lord that each one of us will pattern our life according to what you want us to be so that your name would be uplifted and magnified thank you lord in jesus name amen